steps we can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because we as children of the most high god knows who holds our future life is worth a living just because he lives thank you very much sister camille for that beautiful hymn thank you sister ronda <laughs> for the introduction and good evening children of the most high god good evening god's children welcome 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 to the table of christ health ministries i i want to in particularly welcome my friend i sent the invitation to her just before the program started and i saw her come on and i bless god that she's here welcome sister jay gun welcome my sister I know you will be blessed. I know everyone will be blessed because we're talking about the laws of health this evening. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on sunlight. You see, when I was growing up, every time I think about sunlight, I remember as a child growing up, I was more of a tomboy. So I would spend a lot of time outdoors. I'd spend a lot of time climbing trees and riding bicycle and doing what boys do. I was even telling somebody the other day that beside my house, there was a sweet sap tree over my neighbor's um, place. He had like a farm where he raised pigs and he had all kind of fruit trees, orange trees, everything. And so we used to eat from nature. And can I tell you something? We were never sick. We were never sick. We would get a washout every time we're going back to school, but I don't know what they were washing out of us because we were never ill. And so this afternoon, I give God thanks that we are here to talk about the law of sunlight. I think I've lost my presenter screen. So give me one sec. Let me just go again and start my sharing and get my screen up. To prevent to present a view, give me a sec, give me a sec. But I give God praise that we are here, and I can I can promise you it's not going to be time wasted. Time with the Lord is time well spent. Okay, so if you are new to the medical missionary and what it is that we do, Amen. So we're going to be talking about sunlight this evening. But before we go into our presentation, let us pray. Loving Father and our God which art in heaven, we pause in your presence this evening, Lord, to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of this whole universe. You are Lord and Savior of our lives. Even though, Lord, as your children gather to hear a word, I ask that I, Tanya Dixon Vernon, will decrease so that you can increase. I pray for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit's power and presence in my life. God, I pray that as I open my mouth, you will fill it with your words. And I ask that you'll remove a distraction from around them so that they will hear a word from your throne of grace and mercy. Thank you, Father. He is in the footsteps of those who are on their way. And at the end of this sitting, we will be careful to give no other the glory, the honor, and the praise but you is my prayer with thanksgiving and the forgiveness of my sins. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So we're talking about sunlight. And as we go along, you're going to, you're going to learn some more about the other laws of health. There are actually eight laws of health that when adhered to, my brothers and sisters will save lives. So we have a disclaimer from the Table of Christ Health Ministries, and it states, the health information in these lectures are for general education and is not intended to substitute for any medical advice. No medical diagnosis, cure, or treatment is provided. Now, as medical missionaries, we teach from three perspectives. We teach from the Bible, which is the word of God. We teach from the spirit of prophecy. Those are the writings of Ellen G. White and good science with an emphasis on the word good science. 
We are counseled in Proverbs 26, 2, part B, that the curse causeless shall not come. And in the Ministry of Healing, page 127, disease never comes without a cause. I want to repeat that because I need God's children to understand this. Disease never comes without a cause. A definition of disease. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. And my brothers and my sisters, I want you to understand something. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Our bodies came from the designer of the whole earth. He didn't speak us into being. He came down. He formed man from the dust of the earth, which tells me that when God was making us, he took care in how everything was placed in our bodies. And so if there is dis-ease in our body, it's because we are in violation of one or the eight laws of health. I will tell you more. Stay with me. Now, what are the laws of health? For those of you who are medical missionaries, never heard of the laws of health, I am more than happy to introduce them to you. The laws of health are pure air. We go outside, brethren. We remove those masks that some of us wear. We fill our lungs with pure air, especially after the rain falls early in the morning. Then there is sunlight which we're about to talk about, I'll tell you more. Then there's abstemiousness or temperance, where you do the good things in moderation and the things that are not good, you leave them out totally. Then there is rest. We have to rest, brethren. And it is important that we be in bed by at least 9.30 to 10 o'clock every night so we can get the adequate rest that our bodies need to repair itself. Then there is exercise. The lifestyles that we're living nowadays does not allow for us to, have, to do exercise, but it is important that we walk an hour each day. Then there's proper diet. And proper diet is a very huge topic because when we go into proper diet at some point, we have probably we have gone over all these um, laws of health, but we're willing to go over them for the benefits of those who don't know them. Proper diet is where you lead. There are some things that we eat, brethren, that is not doing our bodies any good. And so we have to just stop eating them. Use of water. You hear from the beginning of time that we need to drink 68 glasses of water each day. Now, we have another way to do that. Because some of us, like me, who never liked water, I have now learned that I don't need to be dunking down my water. I do that in the morning to wake up my organs and to get my body all refreshed. And it gives me a nice bowel movement in the, in the morning. But during the course of the day, I sip my water. And then there's trust in divine power. And I personally believe that this is the most important of the eight laws of health. So once this is in place, all the others you will be obedient to all the others. And the, the, the servant of the Lord said, these are the true remedies. And of late, we had we added pure cleanliness and purity of life to the laws of health. And of course, we know that it is important to have clean environment. And when we live a pure life, we, we will see our health spring forth. Everything that conflicts with natural law creates a diseased condition of the soul. And this is taken from the Review and Herald, January 25, 1881. In the preparation of a people for the Lord's second coming, a great work is to be accomplished through the promulgation of health principles. In preparation of a people for the Lord's second coming, a great work is to be accomplished, brethren, through the promulgation of health principles. The people are to be instructed in regards to the needs of the physical organism 
and the value of healthful living as taught in the scriptures that the bodies which God has created may be presented to him a living sacrifice fitted to render him acceptable service. The Lord wants us to be well. He wants us to be healthy. He said, above all things that I, I wish that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So sunlight would give life and strength to the emaciated. Sunlight is, this is one of nature's most healing agents, brethren. Vitamin D enhances muscle mass and muscle strength, even the heart muscle. And brethren, growing up, we were told that you will get skin cancer from the sunlight. Now, we are going to prove to you that God has not given us things to hurt us or to harm us. He wants us to be well. Sick people need to be exposed to the direct rays of the sun. Then they will begin to show color, health, and strength. Like I said, these are the true remedies. And so the feeble ones should press out into the sunshine as earnestly and naturally as they do the shade, the shade as do the shaded plants and vines. The pale and sickly grain blade that has struggled up out of the earth in the cold of early spring puts on the natural and healthy deep green after having a few days after for a, for a few days the health and life giving rays of the sun. Go out into the light and warmth of the glorious sun you pale and sickly ones, and share with vegetation its life-giving healing power. There is power in the sunlight. Let what your ears hear, let what your ears hear of the music of the birds and what your eyes see of the green grass and shrubs and trees beautified with their fragrance blossom and God's precious flowers of every hue, lift that leaden weight off your spirits and cheer that sad heart and smooth that troubled brow. When you spend time in the sun, your mood will begin to improve. So if you are sick, spend some time in the sun. The servant of the Lord also says, in regard to that which we can do for ourselves, there is a point that requires careful, thoughtful consideration. I must become acquainted with myself. I must be a learner always as to how to take care of this building, the body God has given me, that I may preserve it in the very best condition of health. I must eat those things which will be for my very best good physically. And I must take special care to have my clothing such as will conduce a healthful circulation of the blood. I must not deprive myself of exercise and air. I must get all the sunlight that it is possible for me to obtain. I must have wisdom to be a faithful guardian of my body. The Lord expects us, brethren, to be faithful guardians of our bodies. And even in our dressing, you know that you can dress, in your dressing you can become ill because when you expose your limbs, you are weakening your body. And so we have to adhere to the laws of health. Of all the health benefits of sunlight, initiating the process of producing vitamin D in the body may be the best known. When UVB rays hit human skin, they interact with the 7 dihydrocholesterol or DHC for short, protein 
there to produce vitamin D3. What is vitamin D? Is it a vitamin? Put it in the chat if you believe that vitamin D is a vitamin. Type it in the chat, yes or no. Is vitamin D a vitamin? I see some saying yes, I see some saying no. I see some saying yes again. I see a B-O, is that a B or a N-O? All right, so we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn. We're here to learn this afternoon, whether or not vitamin D is actually a vitamin. <clears throat> vitamin D is a steroid hormone that stimulates the vitamin D receptors that is in the nucleus of cells that regulate what we know, what we know now to be at least 2,000 human genes in a wide variety of tissue, all of which helps to maintain normal body physiology. Vitamin D, brethren, is not a vitamin. It is a hormone. It is a hormone. What is vitamin D? Vitamin D is a hormone that kidneys produce that controls blood calcium concentration and impacts the immune system. It is also known as calcitriol, ergocalciferol, calcidiol, and colocalciferol. Of those, calcidiol is the form doctors most commonly focus on when measuring vitamin D levels in the blood. Often misunderstood, vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a pro-hormone. And pro-hormones are substances that the body converts to hormone. And I am, I'm, I'm 50. And this year, for the first time, I did my first vitamin D3 test. I went to see a family physician and she wanted to do a series of testing on me. And one of the tests that she said, she said, oh, because you're not getting enough sunlight here, I want to do a vitamin D test on you. And I did not object. I was very happy for that because I've always heard that most doctors don't recommend vitamin D tests. Now, as we go further down into the presentation, I've included my results in this presentation. So you will see my vitamin D um, results, okay? Pre-vitamin D is carried to the liver and undergo a process of hydrolyzation from the liver. Then it goes to the kidney that activates it into a substance to form the active vitamin D, which is 125 hydroxy vitamin D. Where do you get vitamin D? It is the UVB or the ultraviolet ray from the sun exposure from which you derive most of your vitamin D3. It is best to get vitamin D from outdoors and not a pill. But for those of us who live in certain parts of the world, we're like, right now I'm looking outside and there's no sun. There are days when you go out there and the sun is out, but you're not feeling anything because it is so cold, you can take the vitamin D supplement. It is, it is recommended that you take your supplement because it's better to get something than to get nothing. Okay? You can also get vitamin D from your food. You can get it from the foods you eat. So dietary sources of vitamin D are not best for God's prescription. You need to get vitamin D from the sun. But again, like I said, for those of us who live in certain parts of the world where the sun goes down at a certain time in the evening that makes the place look so dark <laughs> and we don't get to go out in the sunlight during the course of the day because we're inside a building and we're working, it is okay to get it from your food and to get it from supplements. People can get vitamin D from their diet and supplements. But sunlight is an important source of the, this essential nutrient. Vitamin D is necessary for key biological processes to take in place, to take place in the bodies. 
And some of the benefits include supporting bone health. Vitamin D is important, guys. So for those of you who live near the sea, my friend, those of you who live near the sea, go stretch out in the sun. Those of you in Jamaica, go and live across the road from the sea, go stretch out in the sun. It supports healthy bones. It manages calcium levels. It reduces inflammation and it supports the immune system and glucose metabolism. Vitamin D is very important. The sunlight is very important. But for those of us who live on the other side of the equator and we can't get the sun, no, I'm not saying vegetarians that we are going to be eating these things. But because we're not all vegetarians, for those who eat these things, this is where you can get some source of vitamin D. Salmon, mackerel, sardines, cod liver oil, egg yolk, fortified milk, cereals, orange juice, yogurts. As medical missionaries, we some of us know that we don't eat these things as medical missionaries. But for those of you who indulge, there's no judgment from me. In fact, unlike other vitamins, only about 10% of the vitamin D the body needs come from food and the rest the body makes for itself. Only 10% of the vitamin D that the body needs will come from the food, which is why it is important for us, those of us who live in the tropical islands, to go out and stretch out in the sun. I'm going to tell you in a little while, you see how we go with a two-piece bathing suit? That's not the way to go and get your vitamin D. But I'll tell you in a minute. The body makes vitamin D in a chemical reaction that occurs when sunlight hits the skin. This reaction produces cholecalciferol and the liver converts it to calcidiol. The kidneys then convert the substance to calcitriol, which is the active form the of the hormone in the body. So a whole heap of transitioning going on there. So sunlight and our immune system. There are thousands of viruses around the world and sunlight helps to kill them. Sunlight is an effective antimicrobial agent producing 200 to 300 different antimicrobial peptides in your body that kills bacteria, viruses, and fungi. It is important that we get this sunlight because it helps to kill these unwanted invaders out in our bodies. Vitamin D is an important factor for healthy immune function, my brothers and sisters. You know, those of us who grew up in the tropical islands, there are some, there are some, some saying that you would hear them say like, that you're going to live long to less, Sonia. You ever heard that? Am I the only one who heard this when I was growing up? That especially when, 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 when um, so you go somewhere and persons were probably thinking about you, but you didn't, they didn't know you're coming. I said, boy, you're going to live long to them, Sonia. No, I mean one. Okay. So the sick can benefit from sunlight. When you see they put old people outside to sun them, you ever, have you ever seen that? It's only me alone in Jamaica cities where older folks are put outside to sit in the sun. Okay, well, we move on, we move on. You all grew up in bougie place. So Florence Nightingale in 1863 wrote of the benefits to patients who were near windows in hospital and got sunlight. It was found that patients who occupy well-litted rooms recovered quicker and better than those occupying rooms which were destitute of sunlight. I've always thought that it's important that patients get sunlight. I remember when a friend of mine got COVID <clears throat> and he was in the hospital and I got a call that he was dying. <laughs> Boy, I really took this COVID thing for a joke. I'm sorry, I really took it for a joke. Because I called my friend and I said, listen, what's happening with you? And he said, boy, in the light the way he felt. But what was happening with him, brethren, was he's vegan. He's in a hospital where they, sit, where they serve meat. 
And so nobody was, you, know, you all know how rough those times were. And so nobody was really paying attention to his dietary needs at the time. So he was in the hospital and he was not eating. And he was not eating, not um, not getting the required care, because we're not going to hide it. And so he felt as though he was, his life was slipping away. And I said to him, I say, what you need is some vitamin D3. I said, do you have water? I'm saying I have water. I said, drink your water, because like I pointed out before, water is one of the eight laws of health as well. And so I said, you have, you, what you need is some vitamin D3. He said, I have D3. I said, brethren, then take the D3, you know, start taking the D3. And so he started taking the D3. Uh, he, he got some people to make some calls. And so they started feeding him properly, the diet that he's accustomed to. And in no time, he was out of the hospital. And so vitamin D is very important for our immune system. Don't, don't take that for granted. Physicians often advise invalids to visit foreign countries to go to some mineral spring or to traverse the ocean in order to regain health. When in nine cases out of 10, if they would eat temperately and get, engage in healthful exercise with a cheerful spirit, they would regain health and save time and money. Exercise and a free, abundant use of the air and sunlight. Brethren, did you get that? I told you about the eight laws of health. I told you about pure air. I told you about exercise. I told you about sunlight. Listen to what Sister White is saying. She's saying exercise and a free, abundant use of air and sunlight. Blessings which heaven has bestowed upon all would in many cases give life and strength to the emaciated invalid. And it is found in Christian temperance and Bible hygiene. You can go look it up for yourself. Don't take it from Sister Dixon. Young ladies frequently give themselves up to study and to the neglect of other branches of education, even more essential for practical life than the study of books. After they have obtained their education, they are frequently invalids for life. Why? Why? Because they neglected their health by remaining too much indoors, deprived of the pure air of heaven and the God-given sunlight. A word to the wise is sufficient. When it comes to building up your immune system, Getting outdoors and enjoying a healthy amount of sunshine are two of your leading allies. Think of it as nature's nurture. So if you're sick right now, start going outdoors. Sit in the sunlight. Deliberately sit in the sun. Spend some time in the sun. I'll tell you later on in the presentation. I hope I get there because I still have a couple more slides to go. And I'm going to just move a little. I don't want to move quickly. I don't want to rush it, Bridget, because I want you to get it, how important it is. So sunlight is one of the best tonics and beautifiers in the world. Therefore, men and women and children, one and all, should seek it as one of the great natural agencies which will help to form the life elixir, the, the, form the elixir of life. Brethren, start getting your sunlight. I remember I used to go to go to my friend Shereen. I don't know if she's online. She knows we used to have to catch the bus, the staff bus, at maybe six o'clock, six fifteen, the latest before the bus leave you. Now you know six o'clock there's no sunlight out, right? And by three thirty to leave quarter to four, we have to be trekking along to go catch the bus again. No amount of sunlight. So you develop pains in your body because your body needs the sun. When I became a medical missionary in 2020 and I heard about the sunlight and sitting in the sun and the pain that you can get from not getting enough sunlight, I started to deliberately go sit in the sun. So I'm not telling you something that I have not done myself. And brethren, I don't have any pains. Because I got my hormones into my body and my body is functioning. Not only did I start doing the sunlight, I also changed my diet. 
and started going to bed on time and all that they said we should do, I started doing it. So sunlight and our immune systems as we continue, the sun is God's doctor, which brings health and strength, purifying and giving color to the blood. And we must have it. It is very important, brethren, that we have our sunlight. Diseases related to vitamin D deficiency. So when you don't get enough sunlight, of course, you're going to have some deficiencies. And one of those deficiencies can be fibroids. And so the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, uterine fibroid study of women between ages 35 to 49 showed, years old showed that sufficient vitamin D, 20 NG slash ML was associated with a risk, a reduced risk of uterine fibroids. So you're getting your sunlight, you're going to reduce the risk of uterine fibroids when compared to 95% increased risk of women with insufficient vitamin D levels. And I, I want you to stay with me because I'm going to show you my levels. So the story is told of a woman who was in the hospital for a weekend and she was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. Through the course of the conversation, it was found out that she was not getting enough sunlight because she was told that she cannot be in direct sunlight without developing a rash. But she wasn't told she could not do it, she could not be in the direct sunlight without developing a rash. And so she was asked what kind of vitamin D supplement she took or what vitamin D supplement her doctor recommended. And she said the doctors never addressed vitamin D deficiency with her. So because her mother and her family had a history of vitamin D deficiency, she was told that she probably came out of the womb with low vitamin D, low levels of vitamin D. And so she was just simply given some vitamin D supplements to take. And the first thing that happened was it addressed her insulin, insulin resistance. Because once you're not getting enough vitamin D, there's going to be a series of problems, not only uterine fibroids. I'm going to show you. And so, brethren, we have to become intelligent. This is one of the quotes that Sister White has that has stayed with me from my heard it. I, we have to become intelligent in disease, its prevention, its causes, and its cure. And sometimes, sometimes, I'm not knocking our doctors. They, they, I've been in the university where they've studied. They're wonderful, lovely people. But when we know certain things, we can simply point out to them, let me have this test done or let me do this. And what about this? And don't just take it as gospel. I'm, I'm begging God's children. Do not just take it as gospel. Now, vitamin D deficiency also, women who are vitamin D deficient is, are at risk for polycystic ovaries, 85% of women, hormonal imbalance, Hormonal imbalance, brethren, colorectal cancer, 253%, and breast cancer. Breast cancer and breast cancer seem to be the order of the day. Men, <laughs> you are not, you are not left out because men who are vitamin D deficient have the run have the um have a risk of getting prostate enlargement and cancer by 95%. Higher risk for contracting disease, fatigue, and pain. So brethren, we have to get our sunlight. If you have the sun, don't take it for granted. Go out in the sun. Then my brothers and sisters, there's Alzheimer's disease. There's asthma, autism, celiac, cerebral palsy, chronic pain, cystic fibrosis, influenza, Cold, flus, everything. Last week I had the cold. Um, somebody came here, spread a, left a little gift for us in the house. Everybody got it except me. I was just holding firm, but then eventually caught me. And I just upped my vitamin D. I was taking like 20 IUs, 20,000 IUs of vitamin D. 
I took my vitamin D brethren and I took my flu bomb. I still have the flu bomb. So the flu bomb sitting beside me that I've been taking because I'm still not out of the woods. And in the schools where I am, everybody's sick. Everybody's sick. Students sick, teachers sick, principals sick, everybody's sick. So my system took on some of it and I did my natural remedies to kind of get myself to where I am that I can be doing this presentation this afternoon. So influenza, cold and flus, liver function, depression and seasonal affective disorder. And for those of you who live in North America, I'm going to tell you about seasonal affective disorder because it's actually a thing. Sad and depression is actually a thing. Melanoma, multiple sclerosis, muscular weakness and falls, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, Parkinson's disease, and obesity. Then there's pregnancy and lactation, human breast milk, premenstrual syndrome, irregular menstrual cycle, renal failure, rickets, jaundice, and those of us who have had kids who come up with a little yellowish color, my son was jaundice, once, mm, for sure, you before I even knew anything about medical missionary. Sun come out with a little yellowish color, eyes yellow. What we do? Sun him. Take him out in the morning sun and sun him. So now you understand that the sunlight is one of God's doctors. Sickle cell disease and tuberculosis. Now, vitamin D also helps with cancer. So there are about 18 types of cancers most strongly linked to low levels of vitamin Ds. D, and that includes breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer. Researchers from Moore's Cancer Center at the University of California, San Diego, estimated that by increasing vitamin D levels, particularly in countries north of the equator, 250,000 cases of colorectal cancer and 350 cases of breast cancer could have been prevented worldwide. Mm. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So again, these are some of the cancers associated with vitamin D deficiency, breast, colon and rectal, endometrial, eye cancer, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, skin cancer, epilepsy, Graves disease, Hashimoto, thyroiditis, pituitary gland needs VD, parathyroid function, heart disease, HIV and AIDS, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, heart attack, inflammatory bowel diseases. Vitamin D has a protective effect against cancer in several ways, and that includes increasing the self-destruction of mutilated cells, which if allowed to replicate could lead to cancer, and reducing the spread and reproduction of cancer cells. <clears throat> 600% risk of breast cancer. The study found that Saudi Arabian women in the lowest vitamin D category, and that is less than 25 nmol, 10 ng slash mol had six times the risk for evasive breast cancer as people in the highest category of vitamin D status, greater than 50 mol. So, Vitamin D status and breast cancer in Saudi Arabian women. This is a study. You can take a, a screenshot and re read it. Go read it up for yourself. Like I said, just take a screenshot of what you need to go research and research it. Regularly spending even relatively short intervals of only 15 minutes or 45 minutes to hour and a half a day in the sunlight depending on your skin color, allows your body to produce vitamin D and having adequate vitamin D levels can drastically reduce your risk of colon and breast cancer. There's another study. Like I said, we teach from three perspectives, the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and good science. 
So sunlight and cancer, causing cells to become differentiated, cancer cells often lack differentiation, reducing the growth of new blood vessels from pre-existing ones, which is a step in the transition of dormant tumors caused turning cancerous. Moderate sunlight exposure do not give skin cancer. We're told this for a long time. And so we block our skin by putting on sunblock. Look at that. We put on sunblock. However, sunburn would increase the risk of less serious skin cancer. Basmal cell carcinoma, not melanoma. One cancer research found omega-6 fats, such as vegetable oils like corn, soy, canola, safflower, and sunflower oil, stimulates the development and progression of a range of human cancers, including melanoma, while omega-3 fats inhibits it. Omega-3 fats, such as flaxseed, walnut, will drastically cut down your risk of skin cancer. God has given us everything that we need here in our brethren. He did not just put us here and leave, leave us to wander in darkness. What a mighty God we serve. So a 2008 study showed that men have an increased heart attack risk of 2.42 times more and women have an increased risk of 253% of colon cancer. And again, the source is there. You can look it up. Educate, educate, educate. Now, again, I think I went ahead of myself with a story with my friend in the hospital. But vitamin D3 did a tremendous job for those who contracted COVID-19. It was in the protocol given for COVID-19. And I still have, I still, my zinc, I still work with my zinc. I still take my knack. I have a bottle of it right there. My vitamin D3, those are the big boys. And the vitamin C, those were the big boys for those who caught COVID. I don't know if I caught COVID. I never took a COVID-19 test because like I said, I did not really care for COVID. So, um, patients who were vitamin D deficient were more likely to test positive for COVID-19 by 77%. 80% of 216 COVID-19 patients at the hospital, that name, had vitamin D deficiency. And men had lower vitamin D levels than women. COVID-19 patients with lower vitamin D levels also had raised serum levels of inflammatory markers such as ferritin. And again, there's a source, you can look it up. So vitamin D boosts the immune function. And I'm just going to let you take a screenshot of that and you can look it up, read it up and just educate yourself, brethren. So the next time something like another COVID cousin comes around, you know exactly what to do. A study found that people with vitamin D levels above 38 ng ml recovered from influenza in an average of two days, whereas people with vitamin D levels below 38 took an average of nine days to recover from influenza. I'm going to tell you something about that. I work in two schools. I do one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And personally, I think I held out very good because the first week when I went to the first school, the principal had COVID. When I, when I got a call, I inquired, I heard, I was told that she had COVID. But again, like I said, I don't care for COVID. So when I went into the, into the office, the, girl, the young lady would say to me, would you like a mask? I'm like, no, I don't care for the mask either because I believe I need to breathe fresh air and the mask actually activates my sinuses. Now the students kept getting sick. And every time they get sick and they come to the office, I have to deal with them. And so I came home and I never had anything until somebody came to my house and left a little gift. And in leaving that little gift, no, that's when I picked it up because I had to be around my husband and I picked it up. And so I was saying to him that morning, I said, 
I was sick for a few days. And I said to him, I should, we should not be sick this long because we cleanse, we detox, we do everything that we know how to do as medical missionaries. So this thing should not be with me. So when I went into the office the morning, I there's a ear purifier. And I said to the OA, do you have an ear? Because I never saw it. It was in a corner. It was in a corner somewhere. I said, do you have an ear purifier? She said, yes, it's right over there. So what is it doing over there? I said, put it right here, right in the middle of us. It should be in the middle of us. And so she put it in the middle of us. And then I still felt this stuff. I said, is your carpet clean? I said, how often do they clean the carpet? And she said, maybe once a year. And I'm like, this carpet is not going to work for me because my, I, I have very sensitive nose. So I was literally smelling the dust and I was getting clogged up. And that's the first school. When I go to the other school now, um, they don't have carpets. So that was fine. But the children kept coming with their their bugs and their vomiting and all of that. So my system broke down. I think my system, system broke down a little because I was a little tired as well. And so this study shows that when your levels are up, and like I said to you, that's the reason I took like 20,000. I just went hard, hit it hard. I hit it fast and I hit it frequently because I realized I was wasting time. I was not taking my stuff to work with me and I was not taking it on a regular basis. And so this unwanted invader thought it had, you know, like it was pain rent in my body. And I'm like, no, no. So I'm doing much better because I started to do what I know, what we were taught. So respiratory sinus, epithelial cell, respiratory epithelial cell contains vitamin D receptors and 25 D1 hydroxylase to convert vitamin D in its active form in the body. Vitamin D is important in producing microbial protein that kills viruses, fungi, and bacteria. Sunlight exposure, sunbathing is important. Oh, sorry. Okay. Does the skin produce more vitamin D or less vitamin D as you get older? So I'm an old woman now. My skin produces less vitamin D. And for the elderly, we are, there, we are at high risk for vitamin D deficiency. So if you're in my category, it is important that we start supplementing or getting our sunlight. Because... Um, the elderly are at risk for vitamin D deficiency by as much as 75 by the age of 70 years old. Persons over 70 years absorb 25% of the sunlight they are exposed to. So as you get older, you take in less. So who are at risk for vitamin D deficiency? Those using certain types of medication, brethren, and the medications are listed there. I will not call the names. They are listed there. That And these medications interferes with the physiology of vitamin D. Persons with liver or kidney failure. So it is important that we know what's happening in our bodies. So we can know how to work something out. The elderly, again, are at risk for vitamin D deficiency. Young children... Like I told you before, there was a time when I used to play outside in the sun. You come out of the house, you go play in the sun. Now our children are on the computers, the tablets. As you reach, as they reach a certain age, we get them tablets. And so they spend more time indoors than they do outdoors. The chronically ill, the malnourished, as they are institutionalized. They should be outside under the trees, laying on the grounds in beds in the garden beside us, beside, because that's where the doctors are. Those who are obese are at risk for vitamin D deficiencies. Though the obese is also at risk because vitamin D is deposited in large body fat stores and is not readily bioavailable. So if you have one excess weight, you need to start losing the weight. This is not the time for us to be overweight. Persons who are dark-skinned 
the high level of melanin requires three to six times more sun exposure to get the same amount of production of vitamin D. And again, we have moved away from being outdoors and spend very little time out there. We have moved indoors and spend very little time outside. And we do the same with our children. Take them for a walk. Take them in the park. Go walk with them in the park. Sit in the sun with them. Okay, so there are two types of supplements for vitamin D. The natural supplement D3, cholecalciferol, is extracted from lanolin, and this is found in sheep wool, which is the same type of vitamin D in your body. The same vitamin D your body makes when exposed to sunlight. The synthetic form of vitamin D is vitamin D2, which is ergocalciferol, and it is derived from fungal steroid, ergosterol. Now, if you want a good vitamin D, Nature's Answer has a good one. So this is a recommendation. Once either form of the vitamin is in your body, it also needs to be converted to a more active form by your liver than your kidneys for your body to use it. Vitamin D is converted 500%, D3 is converted 500% faster than vitamin D2. So vitamin D3 is the one that we're looking at, that we're recommending. Vitamin D test. Now we're getting to the good stuff, guys. We're getting to the good stuff. What is the kind of test that you need to get your, to check your vitamin D level? The test is called 25-hydroxy vitamin D test. When you go back to your doctor, whether you live in, in Jamaica, Barbados, Ronald, you're in Barbados, wherever you live, do your vitamin D test. Don't take it for granted that you're, you're not in, deficient in vitamin D. It is a blood test and it's non-fasting. Now, for the good stuff, here are my results. So I did my vitamin, um, my hydroxy test on September 14th. I did a series of tests because like I tell you, this is a new doctor and she wanted to, she wanted to see what's happening in my blood. And she, she didn't even touch me. She just said, whatever I need to know about you, I'll get it through your blood. So she sent me to do a blood test. And so here are my results. 82.2. So I am not vitamin. I'm happy to report that I'm not vitamin D deficient because of this result here, right here. You see it? 82.2. Thought I'd share that with you. Okay. What is the optimal range for vitamin D level? It's actually 40 nanograms per milliliter and above to 100 nanogram per milliliter. That's a normal level. Low, it is 30 to 40 nanograms per milliliter. And optimal health level is 70. And what was my result? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping because I've not been spending a lot of time out in the sun. But like I said to you, I supplement. Can you have a toxic vitamin D level? Yes, you can. With supplementation, when it reaches 150 NG slash ML and above, it becomes toxic. And so we have to be careful. Effects of toxicity, frequent urination, fatigue, excessive thirst, confusion, muscle aches, nausea, vomiting, elevated calcium, kidney stones, kidney failure. How much time does a person need outdoors daily to get an appropriate vitamin D, amount of vitamin D? So if you're light-skinned or Caucasian, you take 15 to 30 minutes in the sun. If you are light-skinned, 15 to 30 minutes. If you are of a darker hue, you take at least 45 to one and a half hours daily. And what's the best time to be in the sun? The best time to be in the sunlight is nine o'clock in the morning, brethren. Nine o'clock in the morning and at three o'clock in the afternoon. But, but Tanya, three o'clock, the sun hot. 
da, 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 da. why do I need to do that? Da, da, da. Uh, yeah, that's what we always get. Because that's when the UVB rays is at its highest. And when you go out in the sun, do not expose your skin. Do not expose your skin. Make sure you cover yourself. You see, just like when she have a shawl over her, cover yourself properly. If you have to wear a hat, wear a hat. Long skirt. The back of your hand, your legs, your foot, the foot section are the only two places that you need and your face that needs to be exposed. And when you do that, look at your veins standing up and drinking. Do it and message me. If you have my number, message me and say, yes, I saw it. Where your veins are just going to stand up and just drinking in the rays of the sunlight. So between 9 a.m. in the morning and 3 p.m., when the UVB ray is at its highest, it's the best time to get your sunlight. Expose the back of your hand, the section of your foot there down to your toes. Make sure your skirt long. You have something cover your thing. Don't expose all your skin to the sun. If you can't take the up here, so put on a hat and just sit down and watch the glory of God after that. And again, Dressing against the heat, protect the skin from the direct rays of the sun with loose cotton clothing that fully covers the arms and the legs. I just said that. In countries where the weather is very hot, clothing is loose fitting, covering the body well and breathable fabric can keep the body cool. And just, just go out there fully clothed in the sunlight and tell me if you feel hot. You're not going to feel hot. You're going to feel cool. Try it. Put God to the test and try it, God's children. When out in the sun, it is best to protect the body by wearing long sleeves. I just told you that. I think I went ahead of myself because I was so excited. One would be cooler under a shaded tree. So the long clothing acts as a shaded tree. Wear a straw hat to protect the head if out in the sun for a long time. Drink lots of water to be hydrated and avoid sunburn. Go on a low-fat plant-based diet. Some people may be sensitive, sun-sensitive because they're not used to the sun. They keep hiding from the sun, so they're not used to it. Sun sensitivity due to medication they may, might be using. I remember I was telling a young lady to go out in the sun and she told me she had, was it multiple myeloma? That illness where all part of her pain, her, she was just in pain constantly. So she's not accustomed to the sunlight. And so supplementing for her would be the ideal thing until she can gradually expose herself to the sun. But yeah. And then there are particular illnesses that will avoid, will allow you to not be able to go into the sun. Vitamin D deficiency. Therefore, we recommend be exposed to sunlight gradually. Supplement initially to build up your vitamin D levels so you can eventually tolerate the sunlight. But the sun is the best way to get your vitamin D. How to avoid getting um, sunburn? And it is so funny that some of the things you eat can lower the risk of sunburn. And there's a whole list of it. Take a screenshot, start adding them to your diet, and stand back and watch the glory of God. I'm not going to run through the list because it's 81 slides I have and I'm not even close. What is a possi possibly daily dose you can take to increase your vitamin D? I'm just going to tell you about the vitamin D3 because that's the one we believe is best. And that's um, 3,000 IU daily. What I have is I have the, at the 1,000 um, IU vitamin D, and I think we have the 2,500. So when I tell you I take 20, thousand um, IU, I just take a couple and just throw them in my mouth and forget them. I don't have no time for throw 20 tablets in my mouth. No. So whichever one works for you, get that. But D3, spend lots of time in the sun. Vitamin D is superior. It is superior and far more important to the human body than vitamin C. You hear that? It is superior. 
and far more important to the body than vitamin C. My brothers and sisters who live in Canada, US, England, wherever you're calling in from where the sunlight is not a thing between November to March, April sometimes, please supplement. Please supplement. Where was the human designed to live? And you know, God knows best. God knows best. Don't watch man who behave in like say them are run this. Because them have them artificial this and them artificial that. Let me just get a drink of water, please. <clears throat> Trust and believe me that God knows best. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Where was the human designed to live? When God made man, <clears throat> he put him in the garden. He told him to dress the garden, to take care of the animals and all of that. So where are we designed to live? Us today. Outdoors. And so parents, you should let your children play freely in the sunshine. And girls especially should be encouraged to go outdoors. Vitamin D is a stored nutrient. And when one is not exposed to sunlight, it pulls from storage. Remember that. So let them collect the sunlight in the summer. When I sit in this room in the summer and I hear the children, they're in the, the little play, play area over there playing. It warms my heart. Because I... I and they're there from morning till night. I wonder when they get tired, when they're going to eat, but they're, they're constantly out there playing and having fun. It's, it's just an amazing thing to listen to children. Sunlight also supports better sleep and sets people's circadian rhythm by regulating the levels of serotonin and melatonin. Sunlight supports better sleep and sets people's... Re and sets people's circadian rhythms by regulating the levels of serotonin and melatonin. Sometimes our, our, our rhythms are just out of work. Our circadian rhythm is just messed up because of our lifestyle and what we do. Over 1 million people per year die. Over 1 million people die every year from lack of sun exposure. Do you believe that? Over a million people die each year from lack of sun exposure. It is a pandemic that involves both adults and children. <clears throat> Sunlight and your mental health. And this is what we're talking about now with the winter um, season and the sadness that comes with it. It says days without sunshine can be tough for many people. But some individuals find going without the mental health benefits of sunlight more challenging than others. I'm sorry, and I did not know about SAD until a young lady visited here one day and she was telling me that she was affected by it when she just came here to live. And I'm like, okay, what's that? But brethren, I tell you, if you don't have a positive attitude, if you go through certain struggles and on top of it, you're not getting any sunlight, remember, you're going to get this. It says the National Institute of Mental Health says that the following characteristics put people at higher risk for developing depression and seasonal affective disorder. Having a family member who has experienced SAD, a history of depression, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, anxiety or other mental disorders, living far away from the equator. It is also of note that four out of five people with SAD are females. My sisters, you have to take care of yourself. Four out of five people. Okay, I see one sister saying she suffered from it when she moved from New York to Jamaica to New York. I can see how it can happen. I personally can see how it can happen. But the blood of Jesus is against that because it ain't happening here. So we need to take care of ourselves, brethren. Sad 
is a specific type of depression. The symptoms develop or worsen when the days get shorter. Develop when the days get shorter, or worse when the days get shorter. So like now, we just fell back with you guys. So Jamaica and Canada, US are on the same time. It's 4.33 here. In a few minutes, it's going to get very dark. <laughs> okay. It's going to get very, very dark. And if you're not careful, you go to your bed from five o'clock because you think that is night. My body's not accustomed to that. So sometimes my circadian rhythm gets thrown out because I'm not accustomed to this. But I try to keep the mentals checked. I keep the mentals checked. It says the... In the Northern Hemisphere, this means that people with SAD will experience the most intense symptoms in January and February. That's why every time you get for go on bridging, me I go on. Sorry, for those who don't speak Pato, every opportunity that I get to go back home to go get some, my, some sunlight, I'm going home. I'm going back home. Researchers say that 1.5 to 9% of people in the United States may have SAD. So there you go, my sister. You are not alone. It's a bag of people have this sad thing going on. While it is common for people who have spells of the winter blues, sad is a diagnosable condition that can have a significant effect on people's mental health. I'm not playing that. I'm not playing that. As with other forms of depression, sad interferes with people's ability to live their lives, their daily lives, and cause a low mood that can feel insurmountable. People may lose the ability to find pleasure in activities that they once loved, have difficulty thinking or feel worthless. They may also notice changes in their sleeping and eating habits. You know, I keep saying that, Bridget, because sometimes we have to be careful. Don't think that it cannot happen to you. But me keep denouncing it because for me, I don't, I don't just accept illnesses as them come. No, 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 no. I am not about that life. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the pato. Not about it. So spend much time outdoors in the sunlight and fresh air. Light promotes gladness and consequently healthiness of body and soul. We're coming down. Sorry, and as we're coming down, my throat is getting dry. My apologies. And coming down is a good thing. I'm at number 79 of 81. So as the flower turns to the sun, that the bright beams may aid in perfecting its beauty and symmetry. So should we turn to the sun of righteousness that heaven's light may shine upon us that our character may be developed into the likeness of Christ. Brethren, we have a wonderful savior. He's Jesus, our Lord. And as the flower turns to the sun, that the bright beams may aid in perfecting its beauty and symmetry, we should turn to the sun of righteousness. There's a quotation that my sister Andrea Brooks liked to use. She says, you will be shut in from by the beams from the sun of righteousness. Beyond this, the enemy cannot penetrate. God has given us the sun. It, it's light and it's health. Let us use it, brethren. Let us not run away from the sun. Do not follow the people. And we say, boy, if you stay nice, son, too long, you'll get skin cancer. I just told you how you can do this and how the Lord wants us to do this. Remember now. These are the true remedies. And so I thank you, each and every one of you, for your attention, for your you being here with us. And I now turn over to my sister, Rhonda Spence. <clears throat> Amazing. Everybody, I'm so excited. How about you? As Sister Tanya was speaking, um, I, you know, as medical missionaries, so many times we have persons coming to us asking us, you know, I've been to the doctor for X, Y, and Z. What can I do? 
And there are many times you go to the doctor and they do all manner of testing, but they don't do the hydroxy 25. And you find that perhaps your problem, Sister Tanya, is simply a mineral or vitamin deficiency. But you're doing x-rays, you're doing MRIs, you're doing CAT scan, all this pain you're having, there's no really um, evidence of what's causing you to have the pain. And so most times you're giving medication for things that all you needed was some vitamin D or Just some sunlight. Some magnesium, you know. So it's very, very, very important that we we pay attention to the very important things that God has given us. I thank you so much, my sister. At this time, we're going to begin taking our questions. Um, if you have a question, I'm inviting you to go ahead and um, ask your question at this time. And Sister Tanya will answer your question. Bro, before you take the question. Uh, yes. Before you take the question. When I went to the doctor in September, mm -hmm. I kept I kept saying to my husband because they keep saying they keep saying you need a family physician. I never knew it was so hard to get a family physician in this first world country. Like seriously, I did not know it was so difficult. And so he took me to his physician, and of course, you know they have to call the doctor to ask the doctor if they can take the the patient. The doctor said he's not seen anybody new. And so I went to this other young lady. They, they, she was recommended to me. When I looked at her, she looked like 20. Remember, no, I worked in university. So when I see them so young, I'm a little bit skeptical. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit skeptical. But then you see what she used to sell me on her. So she's 30 odd, by the way. She's not as young as I thought. She, because I asked the question, how old are you? She told me, how long have you been practicing? She told me. Because when she said to me, I'm going to do a series of testing and the hydroxy 25 was one of them. Praise God. I said to Ian, we're going to go with her. Because I was told in all my studies that most doctors do not recommend hydroxy 25. So it was important that I use that as a marker for her. And the next thing she said to us was, she said, if you come to me, you have an, if, if you have an issue and you come to me, I'm not one of those people who will, who will, um, she said, you, if you want to go the natural remedies way, she said, I won't feel anyway. And so when we told her that we were studying and what we were studying, she said, well, maybe you can teach me a thing or two. So she was even open to the natural way. And so we give God praise. And those are some of the things that we used to just say, okay, you'll be our doctor. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, Sister Tanya, we now know that there are over 2,000 plus bodily functions that require vitamin D in your body in order for your body to function well. That's a big number. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a joke. And as you were talking about all the different diseases, and there are some that persons don't even know the cause for, and their doctors are telling you there's no cure for certain things like MS, multiple sclerosis, there's no cure. But we've heard stories of persons who were in their wheelchair, could not walk, and all they did was sit in the sun for a certain amount of time during the course of the day. And within a week, they were doing much better. Yes, ma'am. So yes, ma something that the doctors have no cure for because they really don't know the cause. Here is where you're having persons being healed, recovering from their diseases because they're getting an intake of vitamin. I want to testify to something. So you know how we live in Jamaica sometimes or in the islands or whether you live in Florida and you don't have the issues with sad. If you do not get that amount of sun, like Sister Tanya, your skin tone is lighter mm -hmm. than most. And so you only need like 25 to 30 minutes of sunlight exposure per day. The amazing thing that we discovered is that when you get sufficient vitamin D during the summer months, the God is so amazing it. that the body stores it. But it stores it, it yes. 180 days. Yes, I was like, praise God. God is perfect in all he does. 
Yes, so it is. Summer comes, Sister Tanya, and you do not get your 35 minutes per day. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. And you're not supplementing. <laughs> you're in trouble. Yes, ma'am. And so imagine for years you don't get that. So when you're older, you're going to be debilitated. You're not going to be able to walk around as much. I noticed something with even my mom. She gets sunlight every day. She loves to walk. She loves to go to the beach. She loves to walk to wherever she's going. And she's out in her garden. And my mother is 70 years old. And when she came to visit me last time, she we were walking and she started running. I'm like, why are you running? She's like, I'm exercising. I'm like, don't run. <laughs> and my mother was able to outrun me. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. And her bones are strong. She's really strong. And this is because she gets her fresh air, like you said, her sunlight. She has a little hypertension because she's uh, she worries about, you know, everything. But apart from that, she's no cholesterol, no diabetes. She is healthy. And I can only attribute that to the fact that she's following the laws of health. She's in bed early because she is tired early. She's exercising. So, you know, and and God is blessing her along with everything that she's doing. Yes, so we're taking questions right now. And um, I want to tell one more testimony. So, you know, when you get to a certain age where your cycle begins to go way off, vitamin D is one of the things, especially vitamin D with K2. Mm -hmm. It helps to check your menstrual cycle if it's out of control. So uh, ladies, if you have that issue, you want to try it and then let us know how it worked for you. You want to take a therapeutic dose. Um, you would have to, as Sister Tanya said, take over a hundred um a hundred okay. I use. Um, um you can take up up, up to about eighty thousand I use um therapeutically if your levels are low. Most times they'll tell you if your levels are below 40 that you're okay, like as long as it's not below. 38 um no you want your levels to be above 40 yes and even 80 is good um so you you want to make sure that your levels are up there because then you have more issues if they're down there there are so many things that we've learned about this one vitamin and it's so important so any questions anyone please open your mics let me and see and Rhonda, 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 Rhonda. Yes. When we were growing up, we were told too much sunlight give you skin cancer. And, mm -hmm. and when we went, to, when I, I, I'm guilty of sunblocking, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. And when I, when I learned that it should not be done, it is a joy for me to go out in the sun. It is a joy. Sometimes you see people walking in the, in the middle of the day with umbrellas. I don't even, I don't even. Now, so, Sister Tanya, if you're in Florida and you're walking for more than 20 minutes, you want to even. <laughs> you want to even. Because if you don't, you'll be passing out. I'm I'm not kidding. It depends on how hot the sun is. Uh, we try to walk at nine in the morning because that's when it's not too bad, but it's it's enough to give you what you need. If you're going to be walking at 12, 1, 2 o'clock, uh, it depends on where you live and what the temperature is like. Right now, it is not so bad because when you wake up, uh, it's about 60 degrees. But I can promise you by 9 mm -hmm. o'clock, it's 75 degrees. And that's perfect for walking if it's in the heat of the summer, like in July. I'm sorry, but it's hard to get good sunlight during that time. You want to make sure you go out in your backyard, you sit in a chair, and you have your sheet, your um cotton sheet covering you, and you get your 25 minutes, and you head back inside because you will pass you, out. You take it how you there, can get there. Are certain, it. Yeah, there are certain types of sunlight is just way too much. So be careful not to expose yourself too much. And as Sister Tanya said cover your body properly the direct sunlight to your skin is not the best when you wear a cotton 
um, that ma material is more conducive because some of the the materials we we wear, it it gives it gives off toxic um, um, chemicals that goes into your pores because the sunlight is hitting it. So you want to be careful what you're wearing when you're getting your sunlight. Make sure your your arms are covered and so forth. But you know the sunlight will penetrate. It will still produce when you wear certain materials. Go ahead, Sister Courtney. Okay, I just want to say I definitely appreciate the information and appreciate the cautions um, that you guys are adding additionally. I had a question, Sister Rhonda. You had uh, just now mentioned something about menopause and K2 in combination with the D3. Can you repeat that? Okay, so we have discovered, right, Sister Tanya, that yeah. like your perimenopause, most times persons who are having a uh, change of life, hormonal changes, um, or even if you're not, but you find yourself having difficult um, periods and heavy flow, you want to increase your, your D3 and K, taking K2 with that. It will really help to regulate, to check your cycle if you don't have any other issues going on and that you know of. So you want to try that and see how it works for you. Make sure your vitamin D3 levels are up where they need to be. Um, a very wise sage well, tells me also that we should take high doses of vitamin C if you're having heavy periods, because that will also work in conjunction with the D3 and with um, create the right environment. It's available. For vitamin c is very 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 powerful and the good thing with both of them is that um you can build on because sometimes you will take too much vitamin c if you're not accustomed to it so you want to build on gradually the vitamin c take a thousand milligrams maybe and the next day see how it you know your body reacts take another um add another thousand to that until you can get up to a certain level for maybe a three to four day period, give yourself a break. Just do these things. Listen to your body. Um, take something and see how it reacts because not everybody is the same. It's not a cookie cutter experience um, when it comes on to vitamins and supplements. Okay. Um, for me, I have noticed that I am actually allergic to synthetic vitamin C. I cannot. Um, even some citrus, it will give me a headache. And I was told that's because my body is toxic. And if I t continue to take it, then over time, I won't find that I, I'm allergic to it in that way. Vitamin B12, Sister Tanya, as we've learned, when you take a certain amount of vitamin B12, it brings about a reaction for about 30 minutes. You get really flushed and get, you know, hives. But then after a while, it disappears. So you want to make sure that you research these things, know what can happen, how long they will last. If not, just call a medical missionary and ask them for guidance as you go through. What, what you can do, <clears throat> Madam Program Manager, is <clears throat> revisit the eight laws of health again. <clears throat> oh, yes. In January. Yes. Yes. Or we February. plan to do that um, because we find that a lot of folks have forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, what it means to implement these eight laws of health and receive the amazing benefits from uh, following these laws of health. Okay. Any other question? Okay, there's a comment. Also wear colored clothing as the colored clothing um, leaks the dye through the skin into our blood. That is true. That is so true. We have to be cognizant of um, what we're wearing. All right. So we have no more questions. Thank you so much, Sister Tanya Dixon Vernon, for sharing with us on the laws of health. Um, there is information. If you need more information, you can always reach out to us at the Table of Christ Health Ministries. This presentation has also been live streamed and it is on YouTube. 
at this time, we will have um, a closing prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Father and our God, we are so grateful for your blessings. So many times, Lord, your people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Today, we have been given information that we did not know before. Just the thought that even the risk of cancer increases for women, breast cancer increases by 600% when we have a deficiency of simple sunlight. And sunlight is in such great abundance. So is water and so is fresh air. These are the things that are important to help us to survive. And these things do not cost us anything. Well, except for water. And so, Father, we are grateful to you. We are thankful for the knowledge that you have imparted to us and for giving us the ability and the platform to share this information with others. We pray, Father, that your children everywhere will begin to experience the blessing, the rejuvenation of experiencing what it feels like to have their cells from the cellular level benefit from exposure to sunlight proper exposure to sunlight. Thank you, Father, for Sister Vernon. Please bless her. And please, Lord, we're asking you to pour your spirit upon your people everywhere. I pray that as they begin to obey these laws of health and observe them, that they will receive the healing that they stand in need of. If there's anyone that is online that is sick today, we're asking <laughs> We're asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will ap apply the blood of Jesus to their thought process first so that the changes that they need to make will take place in their lives. They will have the willpower, the strength to live a healthy life so they can have a fulfilled experience and God can get all the glory. We praise your name today, oh God. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for pardoning our transgression when we were in ignorance. When we did not know, because the Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and does not do it, it's a sin. Now that we've gotten knowledge, I pray you'll help us to go and do as we have heard so that we will receive blessing and you, your name can be glorified. Thank you for hearing and answering in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, I'm going to take.